How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to compare this DJI Power 1000 with this EcoFlow Delta 2. Both of them have the same capacity of 1024 watt hours. Both of these charges in around 70 minutes. But the difference here is DJI choosing to do a more powerful DC output with these SDC ports. Typical AC adapter can do DC output as well at 120 watts. But the SDC ports can double that at 240 watts. Now there are a lot of reasons why you want to do DC output mainly conversion efficiency. When you use the AC output to charge something, you waste about 20%. So even though both of these have the same capacity, if you charge something through these DC ports, you're going to get around 20% more. There are several ways to get the power out of the SDC port. You can use one of these dongles a car adapter output and this can go up to 120 watts or if you have one of the drones you can buy a specialized cable to take advantage of these ports. Let me do some tests on both of these and show you guys the differences. This charging at its maximum 2200 watts. The noise level is actually very manageable and I can still talk over it just fine. At its maximum this charge rate the noise level is around 54 dB. The EcoFlow Delta 2s are incredibly noisy when this charging at maximum mainly because of the tiny fans on the side here. You can even hear it through my mic. About a foot away it's around 62 dB. In the Delta 2 it's definitely way noisier. It kind of feels like talking next to a server machine that's running its fans. Charging at 1200 watts, it pretty much makes this amount of noise the entire time from zero to hundred percent. You can leave it in the same room and it's not going to bother you. Look at that, just 36 dBs. Me talking makes the dB meter go up to like 75 dBs. And I would describe the sound of this as like a very low level hum. Compare this with the Delta 2, you can hear over the mic it's louder. We're seeing a 51 dB measurement here. Internally, it gets a little bit hotter. Charging the DJI at 600 watts, I can't even hear it. It's at a whisper. I don't think the fan is even running. On my Apple Watch, the lowest it can register is 33 dBs. The rated sound output is actually 26 dB when charging at 600 watts at 40 inches away. Charging the Delta 2, I can clearly hear the fan is running. The sound level I can measure with my Apple Watch is 46 dB at 40 inches. Charging at 500 watts, for a while it's reduced the fan speed slightly and it reduced the audio level to around 35 dB. My experience with using EcoFlows is it runs its fans quite often. Sometimes when you drive it really hard it's just running them as fast as possible and it's very very noisy. So this might be a concern if you want a really quiet power station. After a 100% to 0% discharge this is the 1800 watt one so it's a little bit warmer at 95 degrees and all the heat is concentrated on the right side. The exhaust is at 120 degrees. The input is cool at 83 degrees. The bottom of the battery is a little bit warm here, 100 degrees. A lot cooler than I expect it to go. Sometimes these things can go all the way up to 130 degrees on the surface. Looking at the Delta II, the front panel is 100 degrees. Top is 109, quite hot there. The side panel is 98 degrees. The back panel is 100 degrees. And the stuff inside is actually 144 degrees. A little bit cooler on this side, 125 degrees. And the intake, Ooh, we see something in there that's 160 degrees, very hot on the left side. So they definitely needed the air movement going through there to cool it. I disassembled these products to check out the size of the fan. The Delta II has a total of three fans, one, two, three. The diameter of each fan is about two and a quarter inches. In the Power 1000, they're roughly three inches in diameter. And there are two of them, one here and one here. Air gets sucked in here and gets pushed out over there. Because the Delta II is an 1800 watt inverter, you're going to see a bit less electronics. There's one heat sink here and another one right next to it. There's a shroud over these heat sinks because these ones get really, really hot. I presume so the heat won't leak on to the other side over here. In the Power 1000, it's a 2200 watt inverter continuous. There's more electronics to support it all and there are more heat sinks to cool it. In both of them, you see a lot of glue for vibration protection, mainly for the things that are kind of hanging off of the board. For example, like these capacitors if they glue them down they won't get flexed as much but you do see a lot more glue in the power 1000 holding everything together the internal cells are just a tiny bit smaller in the delta 2s i was surprised they use something this big in the power 1000 it's a 3.2 volt 20 amp hour cell for the power 1000 this charging it from 100 to zero i got a total capacity of 
72 watt hours. For the EcoFlow Delta 2, I got a capacity of 882 watt hours, a difference of 1%. So the capacity of both of them are very similar. It's lower than the rated 1024 watt hour capacity because there's some conversion loss when you use the AC inverter. This charging it at its maximum of 2200 watts. It took only 23 minutes and 52 seconds to completely empty the entire thing. This is pretty new to these devices these days, discharging at close to 2.2C. Typically these power stations discharges at around 1C, so it would take more like one hour and the discharge rate is a lot slower. In the Delta II, you can only discharge at up to 1800 watts. Doing so took 28 minutes and seven seconds. It takes a little bit longer because it's pulling less electricity out. You can also draw even more than this for about 30 seconds at 2600 watts. So I'm going to plug a whole bunch of stuff in here and try to get it to 2600 watts and time it. I'm drawing at 2528. It's been 30 seconds. Okay, around 30 seconds and it did cut it off. It can also do a peak of 4400 watts, meaning that it can momentarily spike that much for a very short duration of time. The Delta II can do 2400 watts at 60 seconds. 23. So if it goes over 2400 watts, just a little bit, it will turn off. So let me go at 2300 watts and see how long it'll last. Let's see how long it goes. 30 seconds. The fan is going nuts now. Eventually he's not gonna like it. There, he turned off at 56 seconds, probably because I went over a little bit just right before I did this test. So I'd say the specifications are pretty correct. 2400 watts at 60 seconds, although the peak can only do up to 2700 watts. The charge rate on both of them are exactly the same at 1200 watts. The time to charge a Power 1000 takes about 71 minutes and nine seconds. The time to charge a Delta II took a smidgen less time at 67 minutes and 37 seconds. These USB-C ports are each 140 watt capable. Typical ones are only 100 watts. You can recharge 50% of a MacBook Pro within 30 minutes. With the Delta II, you also get two USB-C ports, but they're only 100 watts each. Let me plug it in, turn on the USB power. My laptop's about 58% charge and it's using only 90 watts. Oftentimes you would use these power stations as UPS uninterruptible power supplies. So when you plug computers and stuff to it, you don't want the power to be interrupted if the power goes out. I have a scope connected so we can measure in milliseconds. There's a light here so we can visually see the switch over time. We'll pull the plug here stop it and this little blip on the scope is the transition time we can zoom into that the difference is shown here 12.2 milliseconds sometimes when you plug it back in it also cuts off momentarily so let me plug it back in right there when you reconnect the grid power it also blips for 9.2 milliseconds and also around 300 milliseconds later the voltage drooped a little bit but this doesn't matter as much as that and as long as it's under 20 milliseconds you can run computers or even desktops with it we'll do the same thing with the delta 2 unplug it and here's the blip, 18 milliseconds, roughly 22 milliseconds switch over when you reconnect the power. The Delta II has slightly worse switch over time when using it as a UPS. Sometimes when you measure the switch over times, it depends on the load that you put on it. If it's a very heavy load, it might take a little bit longer. So you have to look at the worst case scenario. The worst case switch over time for the DJI is 20 milliseconds, but for the Delta II is 30 milliseconds. Usually for desktops that are not battery powered, you want it to be under 20 milliseconds. With the Delta II, is not recommended to connect a desktop computer to it because if you ever lose power, you may lose data. DJI chose to design these power stations with high power DC output ports called the SDC and SDC Lite. They look like really large XT60 ports. There are two pins and then four additional ones in the center. Typically, you would use 12 volt car adapter ports, but those can only go up to 120 watts. These SDC ports can go up to 240 watts. For now, the SDC and SDC light ports behave exactly the same but in the future they may make the SDC port more powerful with a firmware update. In the Delta 2 you can plug solar panels directly to it. That's with this XT60 port which only goes up to 15 amps. On the DJI they chose to use these external modules that connects to the SDC port. Each of them can accept three 100 watt solar panels and they partner with a company called Zygnus. If you look at the direct cable that comes out of it it's a XT60 port and each of those ports 
goes in one of these. So you end up having a bunch of dongles over here, but they do attach to the main unit. You also have these guys, which are sold separately in case you want a car adapter output or charge it with your car. Plug in one of the adapters for a 12 volt car adapter output for the 12 volt car adapter charging. Well, it has this dongle and you plug that in along with the XT60 connector and now you can charge it with your car. Let me show you guys how these things are attached to the main unit. So there's some electronics in here. It's not just a joint and these MPPT controllers can make your solar panels 5 to 40% more effective by tracking the maximum power point. Attach the screw here, attach another panel here, secure in place and secure the other one on top and the airflow will go against the back of the MPPT controller and come upwards and also probably downwards to cool the bottom one as well. Now we can connect both of them. I kind of got to grab it like that and I can lift it. So it does block this handle slightly. When you're charging, it cannot be in the case. It needs ample airspace around it in order to vent all the heat. If you have six other Zygnus 100 watt panels, you can charge their entire battery bank from zero to 100% in just one hour and 40 minutes, right around noon time. So I should be getting a lot of solar right now. Plugging in the first one, considering it's a 100 watt panel, that's pretty good, 68 watts. When I plug the second one in, it resets to zero and and it needs to recalibrate. It's doing its MPPT thing. It's getting around 77 each. Plug in one more. Three of them, I'm getting 240 watts. So that's 80 watts each. All plugged in, I'm getting 497 watts. Theoretical maximum of 600 watts. So that's pretty dang good. With each panel, there's a little green LED to indicate that it's connected. Same thing with the bottom one, one, two, three. You can change these panels to two different angles. If you unhook this, it can go a little bit higher. Right now it's 505, so I got five more watts. Let me do it to the rest of them right there. And look at that, now we have 527 watts. At the top, it even tells you the voltage of all the panels. Internally, it's connecting them in series, 54.7 volts for both of them. You can also get a case for the Power 1000. If it's snugly inside, and close the lid, then you can lift it with the top handle open up the handle, open up the front pocket, and we can access the front panel. It says power over here, which is underneath. But when you use it within the case, you do need to open up the vents. This is the intake, so I would just kind of tuck it in like this so it won't get blocked. And same thing for the other side. You can also tuck it in into the outer pocket. The bottom has rubber feet. It doesn't really slide around when you try to push it. The back has a storage pocket. Here you can store two of the MPPT controllers, the hardware kit, the AC cable, and on either side, you can put the AC power adapters, one on this side and one on the other side. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it shows you what the differences are between these power stations. If you guys are interested in getting the DJI Power 1000, check out my affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching this video. Until next time.